Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's Word today. Now, we are in a new week and remember the Spirit of God say He is multiplying grace upon you. Now, what does that mean? It means more efficiency, more effectiveness. You will be challenged to do more of everything that you've been used to doing. So, when the Lord is multiplying grace upon your life, there are certain things he will put in place. And that's what we got talking last week, specifically about patience. Patience, allowing patience to have her perfect work in you. And then in, in dealing with patience, we, I showed you how patience comes. It comes by the trying of your faith. Now that's why James tells us, count it all joy praise god now this week we're going to be looking at um same in in line with the same thoughts and we're going to be looking at the the real calling of a believer you know sometimes you, you want to ask yourself this thing we're doing you know what is it all about some people just think it's all to escape hell see now it's it's amazing when when we talk about that that some people don't really understand the whole concept of hell, the whole concept of heaven. And, um, and that's just simply because people don't study the Bible. If you study the scriptures carefully, of course, when I mean studying, I'm not just talking about reading like an academician. Now, some of these things, even Bible schools may not give it to you. It takes revelation. And I'll tell you something about revelation. The only giver of revelation is Jesus himself. So if he does not approve of you, He's giving you nothing, praise God. So, so it, it, it's on you to develop your relationship with him to the point that he will begin to teach you himself. So when we talk about heaven, when we talk about hell, you know, lake of fire, lots of people don't understand what the concept is. You know, so I, was, I remember talking to someone one time and then the person was like, you know, what, what's going to happen to, you know, my grand, you know, all those uh, grandparents, for example, in Africa, who didn't get saved or who didn't hear the gospel. They had no opportunity to hear the gospel like we do today. I said, simple, it's clearly written in scriptures. What's going to happen to them? See, you know, they will be given the opportunity. Now, it's, 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 you see, the Bible says in the book of Revelation now, he says when the final judgment day comes, what's going to happen? Everybody that has ever lived on earth and died will come back to earth. It's, it's, it's clearly stated there. He said even the sea will give up the dead. Hell itself, hell, hell. Meaning everyone that is in hell today, do people go to hell? Yes, they do. Praise God. Do people go to heaven when they die? No, they don't. That was, that's a shocker. But it's the truth. Nobody dies and goes to heaven. No dead person is in heaven. Praise <laughs> God. No one. Heaven is for the living. Only living people are in heaven. But you see, there is a truth that there is a place for those who are righteous and die. Now, when I say there is a place, why can't they go to heaven? It's obvious. They died because death subdued them. And death is an enemy of God. Now that's, the, that's what the Bible meant when it says the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So death actually is an enemy of God. Now, <laughs> I'm just trying to introduce what I'm about to share with you um, this week. And so I'm just going on like this, you know, 
We remember the Lord told us to call for that daily bread and every broadcast. So we are just going to do that right away. And before we go into what I was trying to introduce to you. So are you ready? Now, this is very important for someone. Very important for someone that we do this. So declare this with me. Say, Father, today I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, someone was sharing with me recently how, like, Pastor, I just noticed that my finances, you know, have just, not, not, not that big things are happening, but I just noticed that since we started declaring this daily bread thing, I just realized that worries, the things I used to worry about before they've all gone. Now, that's what the Word of God does. So, when we do this every day, it's because of someone. Praise God. So, I was talking to you about what happens to those who, who die in Christ and those who, who died without Christ. You see, it's not a matter of how you die. The most important thing, and hear me, and hear me good. The most important thing is, Truly, how you were born. How did you come into this world? That's the most important thing. If you came into this world illegally, then you're done for. There is nothing that can be done about your situation. But if you came into this world legally, now what do I mean legally and illegally? Because there are people who are in this world illegally. Now, this is not the time for that, but just get it, put it somewhere in your mind. But then everybody that comes into this world and dies there are people who uh, the righteous because they became subject to the spirit of death they are going to be held as prisoners of death until the day of their deliverance now the day of the, their deliverance is what we refer to as the rapture of the church some people don't believe in the rapture of the church and i feel sorry for their thinking see because they haven't studied it carefully you see this happen a lot in the body of christ you know someone just thinks he has gotten um, an insight or a revelation and he wants to run with it he doesn't cross check it with the whole bundle of truths you see so because god gives you one understanding you don't cross check it because it's like when we communicate as humans i can be telling you something there is a particular direction i'm driving at with that thing and if you misunderstand me, you would think I'm saying something or saying something against what I've said before. But sincerely speaking, when you put the whole truth together, you will see that they fall in line. So when you meet people who do say, look, forget it, there's no, nothing like rapture. That, you know, some even think that the rapture has, has already happened or, or it's, 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 it's funny. Listen, the day the rapture is going to take place. Hear me. The Bible clearly says the dead in Christ will rise. So you need to ask yourself first of all that why will they rise? They will rise because first they were not supposed to die. So that's why I say they are all prisoners to the spirit of death. So the rapture in itself it's not God coming to take us away. No, you know, oh, you know, sometimes say, oh Lord, the suffering is too much. Jesus, please come fast. No, Jesus is not going to come fast because of that. There is a plan, there is a program. If we want Jesus to come quick, it's on us to get ourselves ready for him. There are certain things that must be fulfilled before Jesus comes. And those are the things that he is waiting. Now that's why Jesus said, no man knows the hour. Why? Because God didn't fix a time for the rapture. The rapture is called, or the second coming, whichever one, because both of them are true. They are dependent on our readiness. And God is giving us enough room to be ready. But guess what? A time will come when he will not wait for us anymore. 
He will instruct the ones who are ready to listen and hear him. Just like he did in the days of Noah. Jesus actually said, it's going to be like the days of Noah. So a time will come when God will say, even if it will be one person that is ready, and that one person will have to fulfill, for example, in Noah's case, the ark has to be completely built. In Noah's case, the ark has to be completely built. The flood, there was no way the flood was going to come until that ark was built. Now, if Noah had spent 10 days in building the ark, then the flood would have come after 10 days. If Noah had spent 200 years building the ark, now, according to history, it is said Noah spent over 40 years building that ark. Now, the ark was not going to take everyone by surprise, though it looked like that. But you see, sorry, the flood was not going to take everyone by surprise. But you see, it looked like that, but it didn't take Noah by surprise. So Noah and his family finished. They knew the flood was coming because God said so. God told them how to prepare. They got in preparing and the, they got waited, the flood waited until the ark was complete. It was when the ark was complete, the Lord told them the next instruction. Get yourselves inside the ark, get all the animals in and shut the door. The door, they were not rushing to shut the door because they saw rain coming. No, God gave them instruction. Everything is complete now. Yes, sir. Shut the door of the ark. And then they shut the door of the ark. And after the door was shut, then God allowed the rains to start. So hear me. And Jesus said, it's going to be like the days of Noah. So he is giving the church time now because his will is already there on the earth. But listen to me, the time, the season will come where God is going to start speaking directly to those who pay attention to his voice. Now, that's why in our ministry, we'll always insist in everything, you've got to hear the voice of God yourself. Because when, when God begins to instruct his own, it is left for those who are willing to hear him and obey his voice or disobey him. But you see, there is a preparation that the church is, God is preparing the church for. Remember, Jesus said, I will build my church. And now there is no physical place for the location of that church. That church is we. We are that temple. And he's doing all that work today. Question is, are you part of the church that Jesus is building? If you are not part of that church, then there is no point. You see, you are not part of those waiting for the rapture. But those who belong to that church, there is something unique about them. They hear the voice of their master. So the time will come when God is going to give us that victory over death. Now that is the final instruction. That is the final revelation that is going to come upon the church. And when that revelation comes, just like the season came when believers began to realize, look, we can challenge sickness and stay in health. And many of God's children are enjoying that. There was a season you can't even think of that. But, but we, we began to grow. We got to that point where you realize, look, you can overcome poverty. I mean, you can actually overcome poverty. And many of God's children began to come out of poverty. Hear me. The last confrontation that is going to take place is when we begin to confront death. And hear me. It's not something we are waiting for. Some of us are beginning to stand against that spirit of death. And we are standing against it boldly. See? Because until that happens, the day we get that understanding, not just getting an understanding in our mind. We lay hold onto that truth. Now, that is the ark being built. That is the final, the final topping of the ark. And the moment that is done, he will command that the door be shut. And then, that is what is going to make the angels sound the trumpet. 
It is not a trumpet of warning. The trumpet is a shout of victory. When that trumpet sounds, the trumpet is signifying that they have become victorious. Over what? Death. That is the day the dead in Christ will rise. You know why they will rise? Because we have overcome death. We have shown the foolishness and nakedness of death. So you know what? From that day, it's not going to hold. It can't hold anybody back. Everyone who belonged to Jesus. You remember when Jesus died. The Bible say the dead, the saints who have died before him. When Jesus died and went to hell, he delivered those saints. So Jesus showed that death was powerless. And when he did that before, he resurrected many saints. Not everybody, saints with him. So in this case also, when we, deal, when we um, overpower death, then the saints who have died after Jesus will rise too. Listen, it's a whole week, and I'm go we're going to be looking at these things. Stay with, this, stay with these meetings, stay with these messages, and let the Spirit of God help you with understanding. And surely I assure you this, you will be blessed. My time is up for today. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.